and we're just outside the grand entrance when the park was opened 10,000 people clambered around this area to watch it happen from a population of 30,000 in Birkenhead so it's pretty crazy numbers when you think about it Restored 1847 Does it say? Does it say on there? Yeah, mobile And that's the Birkenhead Park Boathouse. Restored with oil money. You'll see these notice boards around the park and outside, in fact. It's got a little bit of information talking about um, the People's Park as the first. It was the first park in the world to be funded publicly and on the grand opening 10,000 people turned up I'm just nipping around to I'm just nipping around to the pavilion um, might let me in they might let me um, have a little nose around let's go and check I'm just nipping around to I'm just nipping around to the pavilion um, might let me in they might let me um, have a little nose around let's go and check And that's it. These guys are just letting me have a little look around. It's not open at the moment, but let's have a little wonder. from the parties from when they're passing across the park. Take a little look at these guys. photos of the cricket team Just says this place itself was open in 1993. 
Whoa, Jesus, look at that. Someone's been catching the razor. Okay, mate. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, no problem at all, mate. Do you have the door, though? No, I don't know, thanks, bro. All right. Cheers. Well, time to keep moving. Jesus. This place reminds me of um, a swimming bath that I used to work in and from was really old. They've got loads of pictures of them, like the 1900s as, as well. Thanks a lot. What are you recording for? Just for yourself? Um, no, for YouTube. Oh, right. I'm talking about the history because I'm, you know. This was here before the park. Was it? I thought that. Well, you have a look. 1846. Jesus, park, yeah. 1847. So this was here first. Going to have to cut that 93 bit out. Um, there's a sign in there saying it was formed in from. The cricket club. Yeah. No, 1846 stuff there. Oh. On the top, see. Yeah. It's rumoured to be the oldest cricket pavilion possibly in England. But the oldest cricket pavilion possibly in England. Yeah, you need Fact. to talk to our historian for that. Because they've actually got a historian here. Yeah. They tell you absolutely everything about this. So if you wow. have any questions, instead of putting things on that I don't that know might about, not be right. Yeah, yeah. Um, you no, like I, I, I um put like a lot of information in it, so like I check everything up. Um, yeah, well that's that's hard to find out. Yeah. But it is not he's tried and. He can't say it for certain, but he thinks it is. Yeah. The oldest, but yeah um, it, it predates the park, this. Wow. Crazy. It's very interesting. Look at these. Jesus. How long that's been there? Just been chatting to the guy, and um, apparently the pavilion is 93, and the cricket club predates the park entirely. He was telling me when um, all the nice houses were built, you could see right across to the Mersey. So some of the properties around the park are gorgeous. You have um, people like Mark Wright, ex-Liverpool and Chester manager, moved into one a few years ago, I think he's left now. But it just shows you the wealth that um, that was around this place at the time.
Oh. The gate's been left open. On the west end of um, of the west end of Beckenham Park is a tribute to jo Joseph Paxton. Oh, it's open. It's open. A tribute to Joseph Paxton, um, the designer of the park. When he done it, he, he got eight hundred pound for the design, and um, I think that translates. Some woman's watching me. I think that translates to about twenty five grand in our, our money today. Off to the rugby club. Once again, it's not open, but I'm going to try and um, have a little mooch around, see what's what. Oh. Pretty cool this, I reckon they'll let me in. Fingers crossed. Hello? Um, just making a video about Birkenhead Park. Is it okay to have a little look around inside? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I can imagine this being really busy, really lively after a game with all the rugby lads. Got a function room down here. Fully loaded. Thanks. There it is, there's a rugby club. Well, I'm gonna... Gonna walk across, check the stand out. These dug out. These dug out look now. Check them out. Lovely little building. Beckham Park FC. Uh, yeah, Beck Beckham Park Football Club. Maybe they were rough. Coming down to Beckham Park. I know the rugby club I am um, had a terrible reputation for being um, heavy-handed, and this is where you would sit, the home team. Uh, 
and then straight over to the function rooms for a pint. Time, keep moving on. During the war, the government took all the fences down from parks for scrap, but they've left Birkenhead parks up, so um, it must be something to do with the significance of it being the world's first. Another well, they've got PPE now. There's a place where it was bombed, it's not been repaired. If you just walk around to Patton Street, I don't know. If you just walk around to Patton Street, I'm not sure if that's named after General Patton. You can see the repairs made to this building, so this would have been pretty heavily affected by bombing during World War II. When you look at the old pictures of this road, it's so pretty. I'll um, try and dig one out and put it on. Just round the side of Birkenhead Park and there used to be um, a beautiful memorial of the grand entrance. Um, I think it was the I think it was um a tool company that was there and they painted over it oh well over the top of it now it's a um, now it's a vet and that's the end of Birkenhead Park as we move on to the American connection from this era we're gonna start off with Abraham Lincoln's stronghold to keep to keep tabs to keep spies in the area Interesting thing is, this is rented out by Rathbone Studios. William Rathbone was an avid, avid supporter of the abolition of the slave trade. And Abraham Lincoln was on the same side, so I don't know if um, the Rathbone Association or whatever has rented this to preserve it. But there it was. Birkenhead Working Men's Club. And it was set up to spy on one guy. So Abraham Lincoln sent spies to Argyle Street. Check out John Laird who lived just there. So that's the base. That's what they're watching. And Cam Laird's is just around the corner. Gonna talk a little bit more about that in a bit, but if you look at what he's holding, it looks like um blueprints. It's most likely if it was to climb up and check, it would most likely be um blueprints of Birkenhead, as um John Laird was essentially the builder or the catalyst for it being built anyway. <laughs> 